Good morning. This is me Nafisa. Today we are going to learn about gum disease. Another word for gum disease is periodontal disease. Periodontal disease or gum disease includes both gingivitis and periodontitis. What are the causes of periodontal disease? Leading cause of gum disease is poor oral hygiene leading to the plaque build up which contains many different kinds of bacteria. Increased bacteria is infection. However, other factors that contribute to periodontal disease or gum diseases are family history of dental diseases, diabetes. Because of the increased blood sugar, diabetics are at a higher risk of developing infections including gum disease or periodontal disease and the tooth cavities. Smoking makes it harder for the gum tissue to repair itself. Smoking is one of the biggest risk factor for gingivitis since it weakens the body's ability to fight infection. Stress is another cause. Crooked teeth that are difficult to clean, fillings that have become defective, bridges that no longer fit properly. Above three coupled with poor oral hygiene results in plaque buildup and hence increased bacteria and hence gum diseases. Certain medications reduce saliva causing dry mouth and we all know saliva has a protective effect on the gums and the teeth. Hormonal changes in female during puberty, monthly menses, pregnancy, menopause makes gums more sensitive hence gingivitis develops easily. Poor nutrition including deficiency in vitamin C are the causes of periodontal diseases or gum diseases. Remember I told you Gum disease or the periodontal disease includes both gingivitis and periodontitis. So first, let's learn how to pronounce gingivitis and periodontitis. Gin, G, Y, Tis. Per, E, O, Don, Ti, Tis. Per, E, O, Don, Ti, Tis. Periodontitis. Let's learn step by step the sequence of events that from normal gums lead to gingivitis and then to periodontitis and finally tooth loss healthy gums are firm and pale pink healthy gums and bone hold the tooth firmly in place healthy people normally have many types of bacteria in their mouth most of them are completely harmless when a person does not clean his or her teeth properly each day, that is poor oral hygiene, the starches and the sugars in the food debris help bacteria to multiply. Above will attach to the tooth's smooth surface, forming a pale yellow colored sticky film called as plaque or dental plaque. Plaque develops in about 24 hours. Brushing teeth two times a day removes plaque. As plaque forms quickly, Hence, requires daily removal by brushing teeth two times a day, every day. Or can I say, good oral hygiene removes plaque. If this plaque is not removed by brushing because of bacterial growth in the plaque, that is infection, our body will try to protect us. Or in other words, who are the soldiers of our body? WBCs or white blood cells or white blood corpuscles. When WECs accumulate at the site of infection, this process is called as inflammation. What will happen first? Infection or inflammation? Infection. If infection happens, what will definitely happen? Inflammation. Inflammation is denoted as itis. This inflammation is in the gums. Gums is also called as gingiva. So gingiva plus itis is equal to gingivitis. What is gingivitis? Infection and inflammation of gums or infection and inflammation of gingiva is gingivitis. The initial symptoms of gingivitis are red swollen gums. Gingivitis is the mildest form of the gum disease. Gingivitis is an early stage of gum disease. Gingivitis can be reversed with professional treatment and good home oral care. Gingivitis can be easily managed, prevented and treated. So till now we have learned on healthy gums and tooth how is plaque formed and then how does plaque progress to develop gingivitis.
Over time, plaque turns into tartar. Tartar is also known as calculus. So how does plaque turn into tartar or calculus? If plaque is not removed by brushing, bacteria deposit minerals within the plaque and plaque calcifies into calculus or in simple words, mineral deposit hardens plaque. Hardened plaque is called as tartar. Now please remember this. Plaque is formed on the tooth's smooth surface, whereas tartar hardens under the gum line. Tartar is difficult to remove than plaque. Tartar cannot be removed by brushing teeth. Tartar requires professional cleaning by dentist and hence cannot be done at home. It is for this reason that regular dental checkups and dental cleanings should be done. This tartar is filled with bacteria. Tartar encourages more bacterial growth along the gum line towards the root of the tooth, leads to more inflammation of the gums, that is gingivitis. Initial symptoms were red swollen gums, but now the symptoms will be red swollen gums that bleeds easily while brushing. In gingivitis, teeth are not loose and there is no irreversible damage to the bone or the tissue. Now, let's learn when plaque and tartar remains on the tooth for a long period of time. Plaque contains bacteria, tartar contains increased bacteria. So if plaque and tartar remains for longer period of time on the tooth, so more infection, more inflammation. Because of the ongoing inflammation, gum tissue pulls away from the teeth and small gap or pocket is formed between the gums and the tooth. These gaps or pocket are filled with harmful bacteria. So more infection, more inflammation, pockets will become deeper and deeper filling with more and more bacteria. So more and more infection, more and more inflammation. So gum tissue starts to recede, hence longer appearing tooth. Now, bacterial infection moves to the root of the tooth, ultimately causing permanent damage to the tissues surrounding the tooth. So, we, since it is around, so we use the prefix peri, which means around. Tooth is also called as odont. Because of the increase in bacteria, that is infection, inflammation will happen and inflammation is denoted as itis. So, infection and inflammation of the tissues surrounding the tooth is known as periodontitis. Another word for periodontitis is pyrrhea. Main symptoms of pyrrhea are bad breath, increased bleeding, teeth appears longer because of the receding gums and pain. Periodontitis is infection and inflammation of the tissues surrounding the tooth. What are the tissues surrounding the tooth? gums and the bone around the tooth. Because of the damage to the gums leads to loss of gum tissue and because of the damage to the bones around the tooth leads to bone loss. Both loss of gum tissue and loss of bone. So can I say that periodontitis results in loose tooth or tooth loosens. Ultimately the tooth is lost. Periodontitis is advanced gum disease Periodontitis is more severe form of the gum disease, that is gingivitis. Since periodontitis involves bone loss, hence periodontitis is irreversible.